Uh, I am here in Florida. <laughs> uh, I had to come down here for a couple of days. And, you know, there is something to be said about this little liberal bubble that we live in, or I live in at least, in um, Astoria, New York, which is arguably one of the most progressive places in the country. Uh, and when you sometimes get out of and, and granted, there is a lot of conservatism in Astoria too. There's very little in between. But when I come to Florida, there's a certain flavor of conservatism that always alarms me. Uh, last time I flew to Florida, there was a guy on my flight that said, with a shirt on that said, Proud Boys and a MAGA hat. This time when I flew down, there was a guy who had a Steven Crowder, Louder with Crowder shirt, sweatshirt on, and a red USA hat. It's, you know, it's it's a subtler, subtler take on, on where they stand. But I, I made a joke online and I said, there's a certain type of person who decides to wear this when they go to the airport. Last time I got off of a flight uh, to, to land in Florida, it was, I had a layover. It's always Florida, but this is important because as Florida goes uh, famously, so goes the country and history. And here we are today. But last time um, I landed in Florida for a layover, this is maybe, I, I don't know. This is, this is definitely in the Trump years. There was a guy I know it was in the Biden. It was, I think it was during the campaign. Uh, there was a guy with a shirt on that said, you know, F Biden. And it was before they had the let's go, you know what? I don't want to be flagged because that's obviously owed now for many, many other things. I just sitting in the airport, I got off flight. I'm like, well, that was a welcome that I've never seen before. I say this in jest, but it's actually very serious because why I say this is these are the people who are the most vocal. We all know folks who quietly voted for Trump because they maybe secretly kind of like what he has to say or some things he has to say. We know folks who voted for Trump because of the tax breaks. We know folks who say, you know, I'm not Trumpian, but I am more concerned. I'm libertarian. Or I watch Joe Rogan, but I'm not a fan of Trump, but I like what Joe Rogan has to say. And look at, he's been progressive on all these other issues. Or, you know, Elon Musk has got really fascinating takes. He's a brilliant man. Or the guy that I ran into a week ago that said, Jordan Peterson is one of the smartest people on the planet. And also, I hate Trump. So these are flavors of conservatism, and I'm not going to shut up about this because these are moments in history in which you cannot shut up, and I will not shut up about this. There is a, there's always been a strategy. I am here as the person who comes from a political background who has a media show. Some people talk about politics, but you know, want to be in media. I am here to do whatever I can with whatever little audience I have or big audience, it doesn't matter, to help you understand how these things work. Political science is a science. A big part of political science is building coalitions. Everybody wants to grow, not deplete. That's why infighting is really bad. That's why taking on your allies is really bad. You want to work with those things behind the scenes but and have find a common ground. But at the end of the day, it's about coalition building for a broader goal. And right now, my broader goal is end this spread of fascism because it is out of control. I don't know if the Biden administration has a sense of what's happening. I know that they do intellectually. I know that they had a democracy summit because they were worried about the spread of fascism abroad and those little losses that Bannon had over the past couple of years were really nothing. We're really nothing because the ideas are planted. You don't even really need Donald Trump anymore. You don't need Bill O'Reilly. They had that big rally in Orlando this week and this, the stadium didn't fill up. You don't need them. The ideas are planted. People can now say, I'm not a Trump person, but I'm a Jordan Peterson person. Guess what? It's the same idea. It's just a little different flavor. So depending on your personality, if you're really into you know, uh, drinking supplements and macho culture, Joe Rogan might be your entrance point if you're on the left. And then the more you listen to him, the more you listen to him, you have no idea how you may have been affected by some of the ideas that he believes. And then, you know, he brings on another person, whether it's an Alex Jones. They're preying on folks and their interests. The reason why the right wing is doing this is because demographically, they have been losing this game. 15 years ago, the Bushes, the Bushes invested in a plan because they were worried about losing demographics. They wanted to focus on Latinos, Hispanics in the South, whether it's the Southwest or Texas or Florida. 
And they lost that fight because you got this other crew who's more interested in preying on young white men. Not a new idea. This is always the path to radicalization. So you find your flavor of young white man, you touch a nerve with him, and you bring him in. You bring him into your coalition, whether they're conscious of it or not. Whether they're conscious of it or not. So I want to talk about really quickly how the Proud Boys are organizing locally. They're across the country organizing. The New York Times reported this uh, this week that they have regrouped and they're focusing on school boards and town councils, on running for school boards and town councils, as if the Koch brothers didn't do enough damage. This is why I will never shut up about this. This is why the Democrats have to do something. We have too much organizing to, and there's just too much organizing for us to independently do to take these folks on. And we're all doing it. It's like a game of whack-a-mole. Even if they rebrand themselves, even if they restructure themselves, even if they're put on a terrorist list like they were in Canada, there's still going to be another version of them. They'll rebrand. They won't even be an, or, or, you know, an actual legal entity anymore. The ideas are spreading. And when the Democratic Party is still structured the same way, I am like a broken record on this, and they're not investing locally and not building a pipeline, there's no alternative of ideas locally. And when every progressive is left to fend for themselves and build their own independent campaign and raise the money to compete with these people, even if they're less expensive races, we're just not winning at the rate that we need to to combat the fascists. And I'm saying that, the fascists. Not to mention Washington's inability to confront those who stormed their offices and threatened to kill them or went to kill them. The coup that was organized internally and externally by the right wing. We can't depend on Washington anymore. So I am dedicating the next few months of the show to figuring out ways to combat these guys outside the box, not just depending on Washington, not just depending on traditional uh, organizing structures, but what it's really going to take. Because running as a progressive today is a lot harder than it was two years ago. Uh, you know, it is harder to raise money online. The algorithms are really, really skewed, as we've reported over and over on the show, towards these folks. I mean, why is it? I, I, I put up my show yesterday. I was watching it. And the next show was literally Steven Crowder. Like, that's how the algorithm fed our show. I know you guys have, have seen this. Uh, we have to combat it. We have to talk about it. And, and um, you know, because this, is, this was just a taste of what's to come.